Hello and welcome to a closer look at Sufi George's dynamic model of consciousness or DMC. The material I present today is from my book, Mind Blow, Understanding Consciousness. By assembling several separate key scientific discoveries into a system, I am able to illustrate one clear way of seeing how our consciousness works. The DMC looks at the antimaterial nature of consciousness, beginning at the opposite end from physical brain research. The DMC begins where consciousness, specifically awareness, actually resides, where it can be observed directly. Why are people hunting for it in the physical brain when we already know where it is? Antimaterial reality is now a scientific reality. So why not base some assumptions on that instead of on Cartesian reality? Awareness is an antimaterial reality. It is an obviously safe assumption that we are conscious, that we have that thing called consciousness. It doesn't have to be made of anything material to be real because in today's science some real things are antimaterial. We can assume we are examining consciousness because we simply and directly know that we are examining it. That's as safe as an assumption can get. It's directly intuitive rather than rational. We don't need any of our physical senses to examine our consciousness. We examine our consciousness with a part of ourselves that is antimaterial, beyond the senses. The DMC breaks consciousness down into separate components, and assigns each a spatial body to help in visualizing the frequency wave fields that the components are made of. The core components are awareness, intuition and attention. The only moving part is attention. Awareness and intuition are motionless bodies that simply process the frequency waves that pass through them. Mostly, those frequency waves are selected by attention. We call this process experience. All of this is obvious with a little introspection based on a current scientific understanding of the nature of reality. The significant idea that the DMC produces is the idea of the generic human being, the skeleton, so to speak. That is identical within each of us, the ways in which we are all exactly the same. The generic human being is the human being minus its experience. That is, it's what's left if one has no experience at all to be aware of. It's what we call our true selves. Experience, or experience originates outside of ourselves, and passes through us and then goes outside of ourselves again. It is a parade of patterns. It is not part of who we are. We can only experience it. We cannot keep it, slow it down, stop it, repeat it, or do anything other than simply let it flow through us at its own pace. So if one is searching for an understanding of one's true self, one needn't look at experience for the answer. Why not try to find ourselves where we already know we are? Who are we, really? Well, when we strip away experience, all we have left is a consciousness system that is aware and prepared to process some signals. So who is that? That's the generic human being. That's every one of us. We are all identical in this way, and none of us can claim to own anything more because nothing else has permanence beyond the in DMC illustrates, the signals in DMC illustrates, the signals each consciousness system, or, generic human being, receives only pass through its awareness. They are frequency waves that are all around us but invisible because they are spread out, expanded. Our attention can tune into them selectively, usually guided by the rational beta mind and the imaginative alpha mind. Because of their shapes, attention first condenses these waves, and intuition then condenses them sharply. It is when the waves have been focused on one spot, like sunlight through a magnifying glass, that we are able to be aware of them. That spot, of course, is our awareness. As the waves continue their travel, they go through a reversal of the process, and leave once again as expanded and invisible wave fields. These patterns get trapped in our wave fields and repeat, or else we could not have memory of them or please travel on and be gone. Memory please travel on and be gone. Memory and persistence are explained by the pattern that experience waves follow once they have been tuned into by attention. That pattern is a figure eight or infinity loop. This infinity loop has some remarkable features. Half of it is oriented to the material beta world, 
and the other half to the imaginative alpha world. Half of it is our future and half is our past. It shows how our past becomes our future, which simply means that patterns we have experienced before are experienced again, such as the experience of remembering something or seeing something continue to exist. Once we understand that our past becomes our future, we can create things in our future by planting them in our past. This is what we call creating our own reality and the DMC provides a clear way of understanding. Understanding is very powerful, because with it one can literally change one's life in any way one wants. This is done by creating the patterns for the experiences one wants, a process I call building morphic robots. Rupert Sheldrick's morphic field theory provides the foundation for this. He demonstrates that every physical reality is an antimaterial reality that contains the patterns which manifest in the physical world. These two realities interact, as if they're looped together. I present this as the DMC's experience loops. We can see that it is easy to understand ourselves, using the DMC. There is some enlightenment here, too, because we can also understand everyone else, since they are the same as us. We can understand the generic human being in all of us. As for experience, we can understand We can understand that no two people have the same. Each person's life is unique. We needn't wonder why this is so. Do we ask why there are so many different flowers? It's a law of nature. It's uniformly true for every one of us. It's obvious that it isn't going to change, not in beta. How does attention work? How does it select certain frequency wave fields and not others? We understand how our beta mind directs our attention. If we decide to look at something, our attention simply goes there. We look at it. But our attention is also attracted to some fields without our conscious consent, seemingly at random. What's this? This is resonance, powerful harmony between like frequencies. We get more of what we have. Things build up get stronger, and develop. Resonance is a basic principle of the physics of frequency waves. We can understand the basic features of how experience works. The DMC is useful for tracking patterns through the process, noticing what happens to them and how they change each time they repeat. After we understand reality, ourselves and our experience, we may still want that ultimate, mind-blowing experience that has been described in so many mystical and metaphysical traditions as nirvana, samadhi, or simply enlightenment. Understanding is one thing, but actual first-hand experience of that understanding is needed to quench the desire for positive assurance. The combination of understanding and experience, of understanding the experience and experiencing the understanding so that they support each other, is the final reward. This enlightenment experience has been difficult to get in the past. Today's scientists have made it readily available to almost anyone who is willing to prepare for it. You can read more in my book Mind Blow, Understanding Consciousness and it's on Amazon.com.